Y'all, this is going to be the shortest preview I have ever done. Like, I have, I don't think I've ever done a preview this short, but it's what it is. I mean, SmackDown Live got bare bones. I mean, there's not really anything they can do about this. They got literally five matches on the card. The shortest I've seen in years. But honestly, it's, it's what they can do. I mean, they really do have slim pickings in this, so they got no choice here. But before I actually get into the matches themselves, I'm going to say this. There are some pros and then there are some cons of this. The huge pro is that it's short. There's only five matches on the card, which means that the pay-per-view itself can probably be no more than two and a half, three hours, which is not bad. That's actually the same amount of time as a Raw show or a SmackDown Live show. So it's not that bad. The cons about it is, is that it's a huge amount of pressure on the performers to bring their A-game in all the matches. And usually when there's a lot of pressure, there's a lot of mistakes. I am hoping that there's not as many botches as there were at SummerSlam because that really did ruin the quality of the match. I am hoping that these guys pull out their A-game, don't worry so much about making mistakes, but just give it the best they can. I'm rooting for SmackDown. I love rooting for the underdog because the underdog always proves you're wrong. So I am all for SmackDown Live to actually perform really well at Backlash. I am just, I'm, I'm rooting for them all the way. But on this card is four matches. Two matches that are pretty much kind of establishing new belts and two matches that are, that are about belts that are already established and a standalone. And of course, we have the SmackDown Women's, uh, the Smackdown Women's Championship Six Pack Challenge, which is supposed to establish the women's belt, the new women's belt for SmackDown. And then we have the Usos and the Hype Bros versus Heath Slater and Rhino and the SmackDown Tag Team Championship Tournament Final, which is supposed to establish the SmackDown Tag Team belts. And then we have, of course, the other two belts that are already established, the WWE title, which is held by Dean Ambrose versus AJ Styles, and the IC Championship, which is held by The Miz versus Dolph Ziggler. So let's get to the standalone first, which is Randy Orton versus Bray Wyatt. This is going to be the shortest match on the card. Bray Wyatt has not been known about winning any pay-per-view, whether it's a gimmick pay-per-view or a big four. He's had opportunities, but is blown always. He's going up against Randy Orton, but, and, and his, here's my humble opinion. Do you honestly believe that Randy Orton is going to allow himself to lose against Bray Wyatt after the vicious beating he got from Brock Lesnar, where his skull was literally fractured live on TV with his literally his blood leaking out of his head? Do you really think that Randy Orton is going to allow anybody to beat him after that? No way. I'm sorry. The only thing I can say about this about it about this match is this. Bray Wyatt needs to bring it. He needs to bring the evil, bring the pain, bring the viciousness that his character represents and just unleash it all out on Randy Orton. That is what he needs to do to make himself look good in this match because he's not going to win. No matter what he tries to do, he is not going to win this. So what he has to do is make himself look good by making Randy look good and himself look good by bringing his A game as much as he can, by bringing out the viciousness that I know Randy uh, that I know that Bray Wyatt has to Randy Orton. That's what he needs to do. Randy Orton is only as good as his opponent. If you're not that good, he won't be that good. So you got to be good in order for him to be good. If you make him look good, then he'll make you look good. You get the idea? So I think that's all that Bray Wyatt has to do is just literally unleash every ounce of whatever frustration that he has and bring it to Bray Wyatt and make that match a quality match. It would be amazing if this match is a sleeper hit, and I hope it will be. But that's what Bray's got to do to look good here. He's not going to win. No way. It's going to be Randy all the way. But at least Bray will look good doing it. That's all I can say about that. Now let's move on to the IC Championship uh, The IC championship that's on the line with The Miz versus uh, Dolph Ziggler. Dolph Ziggler is a... Not only is he a quite a unique character in some ways... But the thing about it is, is that Dolph Ziggler has not really had much of a bone thrown to him. I would love for him to actually win the IC belt and see what he'll do with it. I will be fine if he wins. But The Miz has put so much heat around himself that he actually does make the belt look okay. Like, it, before it was just like, meh. 
But now it actually looks like it's something. He's doing, he's bringing so much controversy with himself that he's at least giving a little bit of notice to the IC title. A little bit. It's not enough to be like, that's a champion. It's just him holding the belt, in my opinion. But he's brought a lot of heat and he's quite entertaining. So people kind of know who he is. So it makes sense for him to actually still be the champion. I don't know what Dolph can actually do. The only thing that Dolph can do is just go heel in this. Seriously. If Dolph goes heel all over the Miz, then it's a possibility that if he wins, then he wins it. And it'll be great if he does because you want as much heat on that belt as you can get. And Dolph Ziggler is far better as a heel than he ever will be as a babyface. So I'm hoping that he will just unleash all of his anger and frustration out on the Miz and just go completely ballistic and take that belt off of him. But let's be realistic here. The person that's bringing the most energy, the most, I don't want to, I guess notoriety maybe, to the belt and to himself as well is the Miz. The Miz has definitely done a lot since that promo that he shot or that, that, that work shoot that he did with Daniel Bryan on Talking Smack. So it makes sense for him to still be the champion. And honestly, if he is, I got no beef with that. I have no beef if Dolph wins either. But I really think it, it, will, it will make sense for the Miz to actually take that belt. So my choice goes to the Miz for the win. Next, let's talk about the tag team titles. The SmackDown Tag Team Titles Tournament Final with the Usos and the Hype Bros versus Heath Slater and Rhino. What can we say here? It is practically handed to Heath Slater on a silver platter. Do you honestly believe that the Usos is going to take the belts? Well, they could. I mean, it could be a possibility. The Usos were vicious heels. They literally took out American Alpha. They took American Alpha out the game, even when they won. So I would not be surprised if the Usos take the belts away from Heath Slater, but that's going to really piss off the fans. Because Heath Slater has been built up so well as an underdog. A lot of people are rooting for him to get that SmackDown contract. And if he actually doesn't win it here, it's going to really, really ruin the mood of the crowd. So it would honestly be a smart move, in my humble opinion, to give the belts to Heath Slater and Rhino. And maybe a few weeks down the line, they drop it at another pay-per-view. But they need to have Heath Slater and Rhino win here just to prevent people from rioting. Because Heath Slater is way over. Especially the fact you got a, you got a Slater's kids section. He's way over. He needs to take these belts. Seriously. You need to give the belts to Rhino and Slater for the win. That is my vote. If they don't, that's a lock. I gotta say that's a lock for a win. But I, I, that's just my opinion. I think that's a lock for a win. And yes, I'm taking it from, from, um, from Steven Larson, but for, for real, this is something that I really think is guaranteed handed to Heath Slater on a silver platter for the win. Heath Slater and Rhino, the new tag team, SmackDown tag team champions. Now, let's talk about the SmackDown Women's Championship six pack challenge. Say that five times over, I bet you can't. I know I cannot. But anyway. We have multiple women in this that I can really remember the roster on five, well, six digits on my hand. You got Nikki Bella, you got Naomi, you got Carmella, you got um, Natalia, um, who else? You got you got Alexa Bliss. So, um, and you also got Becky Lynch. So you got six of these women in this six-pack challenge, and who, and it's also elimination now. So whoever wins this is going to be the women's ch the championship. Every single last finger points to Nikki Bella for the win. But they need a heel to take it. Here's the problem. There is not a strong enough heel on that entire roster that can take that belt and bring it to its limit, except for Eva Marie. She's a heat magnet. The only problem is she got suspended. So she's gone for a while and she would have been the best champion to take that belt. Seriously, she would have been the best person to be the champ. Just saying. But now that she's gone, you got to get the secondary person that has minimal heel heat. And it would make sense to put it on Natalia. Because Natalia is a, oh, no, she's not even an okay heel. She's a mediocre heel at best. But she's a vet and it would make a lot of sense for her to actually be the women's champion. Even though she sucks at being a heel. She's just not one. I mean... 
even though Bret Hart, Bret Hart is more of a heel than she can ever be. But other than that, it makes more sense for her to be a heel. Her or Alexa Bliss. I will be fine if Alexa Bliss takes it, but I doubt that she will. It makes more sense for Natty to take it because, like I said, she's a really good heel. Well, no, she really isn't. Who am I lying? Who am I? Why am I lying to you guys? She's not that good of a heel. But she's well known enough to do something with that belt. So, yeah, I'll say Natty for the win. I can't say Nikki Bella. I can't. I just don't think it's going to be her. I think it's going to be obvious for a lot of people it's going to be her, but I actually do see that Natalia is going to be the champion here. So my vote goes to um, Natalia for the win. I don't think it'll be Becky either, but I think Becky's going to get, she's going to get her just desserts down the line. Seriously, she's going to get her big win at another pay-per-view down the line, but not right now. But anyway, moving on to the main event of the night. And I'm looking forward to this. Dean Ambrose versus AJ Styles for the WWE Championship. I'm rooting for AJ all the way. I like Dean Ambrose. Dean Ambrose has actually made the championship fun, but it seems like it's just taking its course. And I do believe it's probably taking its course on Dean Ambrose. I think he's kind of done with the whole thing, to be honest with you, especially with as much heat as he's been getting behind the scenes for being champion in the first place. But honestly, I really do see that AJ Styles will benefit a lot more here being the WWE champion than Dean Ambrose could be right now. I like Dean. Dean is fun. I enjoy how fun Dean is. But for the face that runs the place that just beat John Cena, it would make sense for him to be a powerful champion, so make him champion. My vote goes to AJ Styles for the win. Like I said, guys, shortest prediction video I have ever done. But anyway, guys, those are my thoughts. What are yours? What are your predictions for Backlash? Leave it in the comment section below. I am curious to hear y'all's thoughts. But other than that, guys, I am done here, and I will see y'all later. Peace out.